staff has funded the webinar and I'd like to introduce our speaker who is Tony Benson, the Market Operations Manager for Auctions Plus. Tony will start his presentation with a brief update of what's happening in the wool market today. Over to you, Tony. Well, thanks, Noel, and thank you very much for organising today. It's uh, very much appreciated, and Alex, for uh, helping guide me through how to get set up and uh, and to be able to do this. Uh, and thank you all for joining us as well. It's good to see a, a good bunch of people interested in, in what we're doing as business and and to have a look at uh, you know where the industry might be in the next few years' time. So just a quick update of what's happening this week. Uh, we've seen the last three weeks where the wool market's tracked sideways, but in the last two, we've seen 17 to 19, 19 microns really start to move and take off. We're seeing a clear split in the market between uh, well-specified wool and uh, wool that's dusty or with some faults or uh, colour and cost. They seem to be discounted quite heavily. So um, the market is improving, gradually grinding, and we're hoping to see a bit more of a push in the next few weeks before Christmas into the new year. Uh, in addition, we've just run, this week we had up on auctions plus livestock, we had just over 51,000 sheep listed. And it's really good to see in the last couple of weeks that we've seen merino ewes starting to take off in price. And uh, just one that I pulled out today, uh, it was just finished. Uh, these are all out of SA, but uh, the last few weeks we've seen um, stock from other parts of the country showing the same sort of thing. Price is starting to rise. So this one, this is on, on auctionsplus.com.au. Mm -hmm. uh, you can see 120 years, 100% merino, just one and a half year old, making $142. So there's a very similar line down here, 168, making the same sort of money. So ewes are definitely on the up. People, restockers are competing and wanting them. And it's a good sign that um, you know, the, better, the better conditions in Victoria and and in New South Wales are pushing prices up and people wanting to hold on to their stock and not sending them uh, to the knackers to get done. So uh, that's just a little quick market update um, for you. Now just jumping into the into what we're talking about today. Um, so my background is uh, I've been with Auctions Plus now for four years and before that Wool Trade and Auctions Plus and Wool Trade merged as a company. Uh, before that, I was a broker with Elders. Before that, I worked for AWEX. Uh, so I've had a few years in the industry, and um, all my time I've uh, invested in uh, in looking at alternative ways and new ways to sell sell wool. So it's something I'm very passionate about in the industry. Um, so uh, about our two products today, the first one is Wool Trade, the second one is Auctions Plus. Wool well, Trade's been around since 2002, and in that time, we've sold over 360,000 bales. Uh, last year alone, we sold 25,000 bales, and we're on track to beat that this year. Average season for us is between 30 and 35,000 bales. Auctions Plus Wool, our newest product, uh, released in 2000, August 2011. We've auctioned 50,000 bales in that time. We've run 90 sales. So uh, in a typical selling year, the auctions will run for about 44 sale weeks. We did 45 last year and we'll probably do 45 again this year. Uh, so it runs every week, every Tuesday. Okay, what, what is Auctions Plus Wool? It's an innovative real-time auction and by real-time I mean that when you see a bid on the screen, it will appear on everyone's screen at the same time. It's available to growers nationwide and it operates every Tuesday at 11 a.m. And it's a public auction. It means that anyone can come in and join in and see what's going on. One of the key advantages to Auctions Plus Wool is it's fast to market. So um, we are building catalogues on Monday afternoon for the Tuesday sale. Now that's, uh, that's um, in comparison to the physical auction where it might take you up to two weeks to get into that sale. So if the market starts moving like it is today, you can say on Monday, I'd like to be in the market. We have a national pool of buyers. Uh, you know, uh, a lot of wool these days from Brisbane is sold in, in Victoria or New South Wales. With Auctions Plus Wool, you're opening up your marketing opportunities to a national base of buyers. And anyone who's picked up a, a uh, market report will notice the 
price difference between the north and the south is is, uh, is actually growing in the last um, month or so. But so you have access to a national pool of buyers, and just like auctions plus, increases the competition on your wool. It's open to all wool growers to view sale and results, and that last one I think is vitally important, particularly for farmers who um, who you know, don't have ready access to uh, information. You can jump in there and see your results or compare your results to other other growers' wool. The credible alternative to the physical auction, and we'll talk about uh, that in a bit more detail soon. And the beauty of it is your broker does all the work. If you don't want to use a computer, you don't have to. Uh, we're also running uh, sales in the recess, and we're going to talk about our most recent most recent research sale, uh, so it gives you more opportunity to access buyers, and I think that's important when we're seeing the volatility in the wool market we have in the last 12 months. Um, so that's just a quick look at the at the auction. There, we're going to go into detail uh, a little bit further about that. But uh, what that is, you can see uh, lot three there. It's um, don't worry about the prices too much. They're our test lots. Lot three is uh, currently on the market, that's what that tick means, and uh, it will sell at that price or above. The next two lots are near reserve. I'm actually holding those lots, and you'll be able to um, see when that actually goes onto the market. Uh, down here, most importantly, your brand is preserved on the screen. So a buyer still thinks that brands are important, they can, they can understand what, where the wool clip came from, and they've asked us to include that, and I think it's important to point out that the brand is still um, uh, shown to the buyer on the screen. Now, if I was buying, there's three bid buttons up there, one, two, and, three, and five, and you can see that um, I can bid one cent or two cents or five cents from there. Uh, there's also the opportunity to auto bid, uh, so a buyer doesn't have to sit there and press one all the time. He can jump in there and put in uh, what he's willing to bid up to. But what we find, found is that, is that most buyers want to limit bids. Well, that's put in a bid before the sale starts, which is quite convenient for them because it gives them a starting point. And then we find the market moves much, uh, much faster if they're putting in their limit bids. We've got to the point now where we're selling 80 lots on the screen under 20 minutes. Most of our auctions run for between 10 and 15 minutes, um, so it is as fast as the physical auction system is. And this is just, if you could imagine, this is just one room. In the future, we could have two rooms, which would give us around between 350 and 500 lots we can sell in, in any hour. Now, for those of you who have used Auctions Plus to either buy or sell your livestock, this will, should look very familiar because uh, we're using the same engine that, um, that we use for Auctions Plus Now I'll just click through that. We see we've just talked about those things. Uh, if I just uh, flip there. Okay, so um, straight to bar brass tax. We uh, ran a feature sale on the first of August, which is during the uh, three-week recess in July, and in February the NASC uh, committee met and they agreed not to shorten that recess, but they endorsed um, an, our Auctions Plus sale. Um, so then various wool brokers, including our shareholders, approached us and said, we'd like you to run a sale in that recess and um, to shorten that time that the market doesn't have, um, the market doesn't run. So then we went out and consulted the industry for best practice when we should run it. Um, you know, what are the parameters and all those types of things. We don't operate in a vacuum. We're constantly speaking to brokers, both brokers and buyers, and sort of what they want in the system. And the results were we had uh, 6,105 bales offered. Uh, as a comparison, that would be a one-day sale in Sydney. So just under 4,000 bales, 221 distinct farm brands were listed. And we had 20 major buyers bidding from at home in China, Europe, Mission Beach, and where I'd most like to bid if I was a wool buyer in Noosa. So that's one of the key things I think buyers appreciate is 
uh, not having to sit in a selling room and being able to have the flexibility to buy wool where they want. And that's one of the key features of wool trade as well. We had 14 brokers participate and there you can see Landmark had uh, about 19% of uh, the offering. Uh, but 14 brokers include Elders, Landmark and of course all the independent businesses. And the market was 20 to 40 cents clean improved on the day. So it was a positive outcome. We, we sold those 4,000 bales and most importantly we actually achieved the premium compared to the close of the market two weeks before. So the main outcome of that recess sale is that we showed that large volumes of wool can actually be sold online and at speeds that is comparable to the physical auction. One thing that was important to me was that we showed that the wool industry is accepting of, of change and new technology and is starting to realise that um, we're reaching a point where innovation is, is increasingly important for our industry. And it also pointed out to us that growers who prompted their brokers or agents to use, uh, to list in the recess sale, are looking for innovation, efficiency and access to market information. We find with Auctions Plus livestock, growers really appreciate having access to the results from each sale online in front of them for their own um, analysis and, and to form their own opinions. And after the sale, we saw a lot of people coming in, having a look at the results of Auctions Plus wool and seeing what their wool sold and comparing it to others. And that's all free, by the way. There's no, there's no charge to that. Um, but it wasn't always this way with our wool industry. Just looking at the history of the wool marketing, it's taken 30 to 40 years to get where we are, that uh, reset sale. And as far back as I can see, we can uh, our first computerised tender trials were back in 1971. And then AWTA gave it a go uh, in the 80s with Woolink and in the 90s, uh, which I was a part of, was the uh, Eclipse trials where they replicated the physical auction. And in the 2000s, uh, the Wool Trade Offer Board came along, 2011, Auctions Plus Wool, 2013, we had the recess sale. So it's been a long journey and, and I have to admit that it's taken technology to catch up and to be able to be convenient for both the broker and the buyer to participate in sales. Um, and why, why it's driving it is that we are now in the digital age. And don't be scared by that. It just simply means a change from analog to digital. And some of the examples I can give you of that change is LPs to CDs and MP3s. Now LPs came out, and that stands for long play, uh, back in 1948. And, um, and the next thing that came along was a cassette tape because people started to be driving around in their cars and they wanted to listen to music on the fly. So that came out in 1962. The CD came out in 1982. And then along came the iPod. Now my iPod has 3,000 plus songs on it, but even now that's out of date because people are starting to use services such as Spotify to be able to stream music, pretty much any music they want, to their phone wherever they are, wherever they have an internet connection. So they don't need to hold a, a CD in their hand or an iPod. Whatever device they've got, they can listen to pretty much any music they want in the world. The next one is VHS tape to DVD. I don't think our house has got any VHS tapes in it. I think most of them are now in the, in the rubbish tip. So, um, so DVD came along and, uh, and and changed the way we watch TV, and um, and then we had Blu-ray, and to these days streaming, where now people aren't buying DVDs, aren't buying uh, Blu-rays, they're they're streaming their movies. So you don't need to hold the box anymore, and you don't need to let my little daughter Chloe ruin our uh, our DVD collection. It's all it's all online, and you can get it any time you want. Typewriter to printer. Mail to email, and thank God for that because uh, the amount of junk mail we used to get in our letterbox is pretty much dried up, but it's all moved into the inbox. Analog to digital photography, landline to mobile phone, and nowadays Skype, and analog TV to digital TV. So uh, it's actually happening this uh, next month in Sydney, but most people have swung over from analog TV to digital TV and open quiet trading to electronic trading. So now we're just going to have a look at what other industries have made that change. 
The first one is shares and futures. So in 1987, the AFX implemented the SEAT system. And it, uh, by 1990, SEATs had replaced all four trading. So three years between um, having those chalkies up there riding up the prices to basically uh, them being out of work and it all being electronic. And saying that, those chalkies pretty much easily found work in, in the brokers. So they weren't you know, uh, off the mines or anything like that. They actually found work inside the business. In 1987, we saw the uh, SFE introduce 24-hour screen trading including US-based terminals. Now, in terms of wool, that really changed who could access our market because all of a sudden we had US hedge funds, we had um, banks wanting to be able to um, trade a physical commodity and they could come in there and do that um, on a, a big clunky terminal um, and have um, you know, real-time access into our market, into our wool market. By 1999, all floor trading ceased and 24-hour trading with futures started to happen. That took a bit longer. That took 12 years from uh, when, it, when it came along. So the SFE trading floor, you can see on the left, went from a hustling, bustling place to practically uh, empty. And the story goes is that the SFE spent 10 years and um, uh, spent $10 million on a new show floor and within three years it was uh, being scrapped. Uh, so most of these traders you see on the left here, they went off and uh, now operate behind the computer and um, buy and sell futures. The fish market, so in 1960, between 1966 and 1994, they had a very similar system to what we had, um, whereas they had a big long chain link fence and they had all the samples out the front and an auctioneer and his little helper. The auctioneer would go along and, pull, and the helper would pull out the sample and say, okay, how much have we got for this? And off they'd go and they'd go into the next box, the next box, the next box. Uh, by 1994, and if you can imagine the Sydney fish market being the most the busiest fish market in, in Australia, uh, needed a faster, more efficient system. So they came up with an electronic Dutch auction. Now if you look at this photo on the right, you see a clock here, and the clock's representative of price, and it ticks down. Um, so it'll start as a high five, start ticking down, and the first person this buyer sitting here, the, the first person to hit buy, buys it at that price. So it's a descending auction. And just like wool, there's a room one and a room two, um, so they can be bidding on two different lots at the same time. And you can see the show floor here, that's pretty much similar to what we do, there's a sample section on there. So it significantly increased their efficiency to be able to sell their, their commodity. Interesting though, you can just see this roof here. Underneath this roof is where the sushi or sashimi section is. So these are the, the big tuners you see selling for you know, 5,000 plus. They're traditionally shown, there's a sample taken out of the side and flapped, and there's an auctioneer who runs around just like um, the open cry auction, and they physically auctioneer those um, auction, those um, premium ends of the, in the fish market. So I think of it like super fine wool, that there, is, you know, there might be a place in the future for them to be uh, traded exactly the same as those um, premium ends of the fish. So a little bit of a history of um, innovation in the wool industry, which I'm a bit of a history buff and I particularly love the history of um, where we've been in the industry, so we'll cover that today. This is a picture of the Royal Exchange in Sydney, which unfortunately was demolished in the 1960s. Um, between 1864 and 1964, it was the world's largest selling centre. In 1861, they whacked in a telegraph line between Liverpool and then to Parramatta. And the reason why they put these telegraph lines in was that buyers wanted to know when the bullocks were coming in down Parramatta Road to, um, to be able to hop on their horses and gallop out there and meet them. And the idea was the first person there generally to come a long way, they uh, will want to sell their wool. So they'll, they rode out there and, and as fast as they could and technology drove that. So they were getting a telephone call and straight out there to, to meet the grower on the way in. In 1880, we the first uh, industry in Australia to have telephones. And they were between the, uh, the wool sheds out at Darling Harbour and the exchange so they could order out wool and tell them there's a ship coming in and wool needs to be on, on, um, on, on the boat. Um, so it's quite fascinating we adopted those technologies first in Australia. Here's another a later picture of the Royal Exchange. 
1882, gas lights were installed. Uh, in the same year, there was the first public demonstration of electronic lighting in the dining room. But it took another 44 years for, uh, for the members' room to be converted to electricity. And some of you might, um, uh, might be able to assimilate with this. The chairman of the gas light company was also the chairman of the Royal Exchange. So there was a little bit of uh, inside knowledge on that one. Uh, some later innovation, traditional uh, uh, show floors to sample show floors. And you can see in that picture there, you've got the traditional shown. Here's is up in Newcastle to um, the sample boxes we have, have now. And that was once again an efficiency thing where buyers could quickly go through and look at, um, at, uh, at the wool sample. However, it wasn't an easy transition, as some of you might know. Next one is the EDI network. We were the first industry in Australia to be able to send computerised catalogues, invoices and delivery orders around. And we're still in some ways the envy of other industries such as the grain or even the livestock industry in terms of that technology being there for, um, for a good 25, maybe 30 years now. Uh, tests and additional measurement. And there were many other innovations that the wool industry went through. The livestock industry caught up. So auctions plus wool, auctions plus at the moment sells around two million sheep um, a year, which makes us about the largest yard in Australia. Two hundred thirty-six thousand head of cattle, which is the third largest yard in Australia, and we have about twenty thousand people a month having a look at our website. In comparison, um, the Land newspaper, which I write an article for, probably has three three to five thousand visit there. Um, so a bit of detail about Auctions Plus Wool. Um, the Wool Trade Offer Board operates 24-7. And Wool Trade, the Offer Board is really good for you as a grower who has a target price. And if you want to meet that target price, and it might be above the current market, you can then go and list your wool on Wool Trade at that target price and make it available for buyers to uh, look at 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Our major player, our ma a person buying most of our wool country is China, and they operate two to three hours behind us. However, they also operate a lot longer in terms of business hours than us. So we do see sales at 11, 12 o'clock at night. We do see sales on the weekends, and they want access to Australian wool when they want, not for the three or four hours on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday when the auctions run. So it's, it's, it's a great tool for a grower who wants that access to marketing and has that target price in place. Our second product, Auctions Plus Wool, runs on Tuesday at 11 a.m. Our catalogue is, um, is 12 o'clock on Monday. And the real beauty of it is, is, besides that speed to market, is that we're taking the industry another step further and opening up access. So um, you as a grower can go in there at the moment and have access to a national pool of buyers. But think of it down the track. If a, um, if a buyer can uh, um, have access to uh, a much larger catalogue from all three regions, uh, he's more inclined to um, be able to complete orders. But in addition, new players in the industry might want to participate because it, it's much easier to access the market. So increasing participation in the wool industry is something we need to seriously think about going forward. How do you list wool on Auctions Plus? Um, as long as your wool's in store and tested, you need to contact your wool manager to, to discuss and set a start price and reserve very similar to Auctions Plus. Uh, your broker lists your wool for you and your, the catalogue cutoff is, is Monday 12 o'clock um, Eastern Standard. On Tuesday, log into auctionsplus.com.au. You don't need a username or password. You can jump in there and have a look at our um, our catalogue pre-sale. It usually opens up about half an hour before. So, um, so feel free to join us next Tuesday and have a look at the sale running. And sample inspection. So just like the physical auction, a buyer can look at the sample post-sale. So it gets 24 hours to do that. So you tick it off and say that it's um, lots good to go and then it'll be booked out exactly the same as it does now with wool trade and the auction system. 
charges, we charge the broker. Um, we charge the broker a dollar a bale, but it's really up to them to uh, to work out those charges, and they vary. Some brokers don't charge anything; it's a normal selling fee. Um, some on, on pass on that charge. So speak to them about how much it costs. So I guess the point I'm trying to get across today is that other industries have moved from an analog to a digital model, and to start getting you to think about us as an industry moving away from, um, from you see there on the left how it was traded uh, back in the 60s, it's still how we're trading today, to what we're presenting today, which is our electronic model. And if you have a look at uh, some of the buyers in that list, there are very few who are still operating. Seaguard would be it. The rest is the Wovin. The rest are all sort of uh, gone by the wayside. And I think what we want to do as an industry is to is to be able to open up our market to new players. And with the move from analog to digital, that can occur. So I want to leave you with a quote that my boss, Bear Sheedy, my old boss, Bear Sheedy, um, gave to me. He said, if our product is easily bought and sold, then this attracts competitors. Competition drives marketplaces. And I think that's the aim for what we're doing with Options Plus Wool. We're trying to increase the, the participation rate in the wool industry. And something like what we're doing with, um, with uh, Options Plus Wool will do that. Uh, at this stage, we're just going to have a quick look now at um, a demonstration auction. And then we'll open it up for questions, if that's OK. Alex? Yeah, that's fine, Tony. Sure. Uh, so here's one of our demonstration options, which is available at auctionsplus.com.au, and any time you can jump in there. Uh, we had a quick look at this before, but I just want to stress that all lots start and finish at the same time. And there's usually a clock just here that counts down. So every time there's a bid on one lot, that clock bounces up. Now it is different to eBay, where uh, eBay has a set cutoff time. But what this does is it maximises the value of the lot because every time there's a bid, it gives the person who has been bid against an opportunity to come back. So as an example, I'll, I'll place a bid on that lot there. And you can see someone's bidding against me on lot 49. Uh, and I can continue to bid there. The other thing I can do here, as I talked about before, is that auto bid. And that will bid automatically for me up to 2,000 cents. And you can see there's a bit of bidding going on. The green tick means I'm holding a lot, and it says on market there. So, um, so that's available for you to um, go and have a play with and practice. As I said, on Tuesdays, there's always an option for you, for you to run as well. In terms of wool trade, um, I can show you a demonstration screen of that. Okay. Uh, if you go to wooltrade.com.au, which we'll have a quick look at. Currently, there's about 10,800 bales on the system. It usually fluctuates between 10 and 15,000. But you can see there, if you're wondering if your broker's listing wool, uh, you can see that. Uh, Know, which prices are, I would say that 90% of them are listing wool um, across the country. So, and there's also the auctions plus schedule here. So can I open the floor to questions, Alex? Yes, certainly, Tony. Thank you. So there's been a few, um, few questions coming in, um, and I'll, I'll start to read a few of them out. Um, so all lots are selling at the same time, like a hel Helmsman sale, is that correct? Yes, that's exactly right. It is very similar to a Helmsman sale. So all lots start and finish at the same time. Very good. Um, the clearance rates for wool listed on the Tuesday sale, oh, wow, what are they like? Clearance rates? It depends on the type of wool. I think we're seeing clearances of 80 or 90% every week. Prices tend to match what um, is happening in the physical sale. Uh, so it's not a miracle system. It's not going to get you above market but um, it will achieve full market price. All right, very good. Don't forget, everyone, if you do want to ask a question, you can uh, either raise your electronic hand or type them into the question box and I can read them out for you. 
Um, do you have any evidence of premiums for clients will over the open cry market on length of time, Tony? On the open cry, no. There was no evidence that we get uh, a better price. Uh, as I just said, I think uh, we achieve the same prices as in the physical auction. Um, the better style wools are performing better at the moment, and that's where the premiums are is based on the style rather than the, the way that you sell. With wool trade, it's slightly different. Wool trade, um, if you are in front of the market, occasionally an exporter will need to fill an order at the end of the week, and he can pay a premium for um, a certain type of wool because he's putting it into you know, maybe a 100 bale order. Um, but that doesn't happen a lot. They do tend to do that on Fridays. But, um, but if I was a grower, I wouldn't be chasing uh, premiums. I'd be, I'd be looking for um, you know, making sure you, you're, you're, you get it, you're in the market when there is a spike. Hopefully that answers the question. Yeah, yeah that's great, thank you. Um, another one is um, from a producer, our, are our brokerage charges likely to fall with this over time? <laughs> well, we're not a broker, we're a facilitator of sale. Um, so our own is an elders landmark in rural code. Um, I think uh, that the way that we're selling wool is, um, is more efficient than the physical auction. Uh, I, I can't comment for brokers and their charges, but um, if if they are willing to pass on the charge, well, that's uh, the reduction in costs. Well, that's up to them. So I can't really comment on their charges. No worries, Tony. We've got a um, comment here from Michael. I'll just try and unmute him. Um, he's a bit unsure how his audio is going to go, but I'll just give it a go. So. Can you hear me? Yeah, Michael, yeah. go. Yeah, can you hear me now? Yes. Hello? Yes, Michael. Yes. Can you hear me? How are you going? Good, mate. Yeah, good. Um, just uh, the question I said about the, um, the quickness of getting the uh, wall to, uh, to your system, um, bearing in mind that there's a AWTA testing, so your wall goes to uh, Melbourne from Brisbane to be tested after being caught. And uh, we factor at Landmark in a 10-day turnaround of those test results. Um, as at, at 10 days is the outside um, uh, factor. Uh, some days it's, it's earlier, like three to four days, but so, uh, there is up to 10 days wait for test results. And that shows the, the only time factor I can, or time, uh, quickness and time, as I can see, is it's a uh, lot of on the day before the sale, which is Monday lunchtime. Um, whereas most of the open cry auction is allotted on, uh, the, well, it's lotted actually at, at core, but um, the catalogue gets printed on the Thursday or Friday before the, that week of sales. That's that's right. Yeah. So uh, the catalogue's printed on Thursday in the physical auction system. So a lot can happen between Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, particularly on that Thursday if there's a physical auction. But Michael, I want you to think with auctions plus wool, we can run a sale on every day of the week. So uh, you can put wool well, on you, Monday. That, that is correct, uh, Tony, but uh, at the moment it's only on a Tuesday sale, is that correct? That's it, that's correct. Yeah. The advantage is, is that instead of that week, that, that Thursday lotting gives you a few extra days to, if the market is starting to spike, and it does happen, we sell wool on the weekend, you can then say, right, I want to get access to the market. Um, so it is definitely faster than um, than the current physical auction. Well, the other the other question, Tony, then is uh, how in the future how are you planning on going to a day or more a sales days during the week? Is is that the, is that the plan? Well, I think um, as an industry, we do want to see us selling more sale days. I mean, uh, at the moment, we're selling mostly Wednesday, Thursday, and for you know, three or four hours on those days. As an industry, if, if it is more efficient to sell, you can envisage us running Monday to Friday, definitely. Um, so uh, so you're right there, that there is a plan in the future to think about what days we run, and at the moment, Tuesdays is preferable to the brokers, and we do plan to run more days into the future. Okay. 
just not on Saturdays because uh, I do like my day off at least. <laughs> Very good, Roro. Right, thanks for that, Michael. Um, much appreciated, and Tony. Um, so yep. some more questions coming through in the question box. Um, just on the cost per bale, if you had bales passed in and put them up in a later sale, is there an additional cost um, of one dollar a bale or, or etc.? Just say that again, sorry, Alex. Um, just so, just on a cost per bale, if you had bales passed in at a sale and put them up for a later sale, is there an additional cost for carrying them over? Oh, okay. So if you pass it in, yes, yes. there is. So it's, it, it is a dollar a bale every time they're listed. Yeah, right. which is unlike uh, livestock where uh, you do get a, a, a re-offer, um, a free re-offer if they do pass in. Very good. There's a, there's a question there, Alex, if I can read that. How is Auctions Plus rule performing price for super fines compared to designated super fine sales? That's a good question. We don't get a lot of super fine wool on the system. Uh, we do get a lot on um, the offer board and I can tell you in the last few weeks we've been selling um, 15 to 16 and a half micron super fine wools at premium to the physical auction uh, because um, you know they need to finish an order and they're on the system and you can buy them straight away. So I, I to encourage you if you do passing wools to think about putting them on wool trade uh, because the super fine wool buyers do look there when uh, when they need that wool to finish finish an order. Okay, another question is: um, Are descriptions and results available for all wool post auction? Yes, uh, if you can uh, you can have a look at my screen here, and I'll take you to where that is. So I'm just looking at results, and then I go down to wool, and this is our most recent sale here. Uh, so this lists the full detail of the lot that was listed, including the uh, additional measurements, uh, and you can see the result there as well. You can also search it, so if you uh, have a particular brand of yours, it'll come up with that brand there. So that one was passed in at 806 cents, uh, greasy, that lot. So the full detail is available online for you to look at. Um, as far as descriptions of walls, um, is there ability to add further um, sections or descriptions, I suppose, such as non mule sheep? Yes, uh, on wool trade, we have a non mule uh, pain release section up here. That's searchable for buyers. It's also in our catalogue, the mulesing status, um, in the Auctions Plus wool catalogue. Uh, you can see there there isn't a lot of wool on the system out of ten and a half thousand bales and seven hundred that are that are non mule but it's something that buyers have requested us do, and that's to provide them with that that mulesing status. Okay, another question. Um, can you bid on your own wool to push the market along? <laughs> uh, no, with 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 auctions plus wool, we only allow uh, registered. Australian buyers to participate in in the auction. Now that's different from uh, auction plus livestock that uh, that um, you know uh, growers can bid on stock. We encourage them not to bid on their own stock. Um, but just with auction plus wool, it is only available to Australian registered uh, wool buyers. Very good. Uh, next one's probably just more of a, a comment from you, maybe. Um, um, is it likely to be cheaper to buy wool off the offer board on Tuesdays uh, than through the open cry system, i.e. down the track we will see buyers drawn to your system because it's cheaper for them in terms of brokerage logistics, logistics costs on their side? Well, I don't think um, we don't charge the buyer to participate in our auction. Um, I don't see it being uh, a cost benefit for them, but it will be a cost benefit for them down the track when they don't have to sit out at Unora or Brooklyn um, to buy wool. They can uh, buy wool from anywhere in the, in, in the country where they like to be. So that's the real benefit from
from a buyer is that um, is that they don't need don't need a staff member out at at Unora to, to bid on wool. So I think there's a cost benefit for them. Uh, they can centralise their operations. Also uh, down the track, if there's no region, um, they can buy from you know, any centre from anywhere. So I think that's the real cost benefit for the for the buyer. Okay, we've got uh, a couple more questions. So if people still have questions, please um, type them into the question box or raise your electronic hand. We've still got a bit of time to um, if you want some more questions. So another question, Tony, is can you switch between wool trade and the auction? Yes, you can. And um, you think about it if you want to, if you're interested in marketing your your wool 24/7, it's a perfect scenario where you've got it on wool trade as it's come into store and it's been tested at your reserve and then come the auction time it can flip over uh, on Mondays at 12 o'clock into the physical auction. If it passes in, tell your broker I want it back on the offer board. So there isn't a point where a buyer can't see your wool and I think that's, I think that's important for a grower to think about. Um, you know, rather than it being up in the auction, the physical auction for two minutes, is making sure it's been marketed for as long as possible uh, to the trade. So yes, that's, the answer to that is yes and I do encourage that and we do see a lot of that where um, you know, growers are going from that offer board to the auction very far, very quickly. Alright, very good. Um, is it still the case that AWEX don't report on the A plus sale? Yes, that's true. Um, we've just recently invested in uh, joining the EDI network so they'll be able to have access to our data. We would dearly love for them to be uh, uh, reporting on our sales um, but I think it's uh, it's a bit too soon for them and they're just taking a bit of a wait and see attitude towards that. But we're going to continue to work with them and engage them and try and get them to um, um, participate in auction plus wool. Uh, we currently do the marketing for that, uh, like we do with uh, the market reporting, like we do with uh, auctions plus wool. So it's in our realm to um, market report on that. Remember, we're the facilitator, so um, we don't have a vested interest to report the market one way or another. Um, and um, but we would like that independence of AWEX to participate. So we've got one last question here, Tony. Um, and I've asked for a few comments from you. Um, what sort of comments are you getting from buyers concerning the benefits um, of this system? What sort of comments? Yes. Um, well, I guess naturally with uh, any move from something that's been around for over 150 years to uh, new technology, um, some buyers are a little bit reluctant to move, to adopt new technology, and I can completely understand those reasons. The same thing happened at um, the Sydney Futures Exchange and the Stock Exchange where there were, were some people who said that we're removing the atmosphere of the physical auction. And there's some that are absolutely ready to run with electronic trading um, or you know, an online auction. And I think we've seen in the last three to four years a real change in attitude in, from the buying um, side of our industry um, to these types of things and for these types of services. And maybe it's through attrition, maybe it's through uh, wider adoption of technology, but we are seeing um, uh, buyers wanting to participate more in what we're doing and we engage them with where we're going um, with our software, with our, with our online presence, what we're doing. We ask them what we should be, um, how we should list for, when we should run it and all those types of things. Um, conversely, we're finding that growers are very ready to use new technology to market their wool, particularly if it's, um, if it's not a major shift away from what they're doing now and it's engaging the industry. So I think both sides, uh, the feedback we're getting is very positive towards some change. Uh, I don't think anyone who are doing these types of things 
would say that everyone's on board because that's definitely not the case. But um, the major players in the industry, the major buyers in the industry who we've spoken to, um, appear ready to investigate and start using more online services for buying and selling wool. Okay, um, there's one more here. Um, with regard to past in wool, I would refer that my agent does any negotiation with prospective buyers on my behalf. I understand this is not happening at the moment with auctions plus wool. Can you clarify? Uh, I can completely understand why you want your agent to, to do the negotiation. Um, I think uh, where I sit, it's a daily occurrence where we're talking with buyers and trying to sell wool. We're talking, we're talking buyers from um, right across Australia. Um, what we do in terms of um, wool that's passed in post sale is that we allow buyers an hour to meet the reserve. So they can physically see the reserve and they can jump on the screen and actually buy that. But that's not the end of the story. So they've got an hour to do that. Um, we then start contacting them and saying, um, you know, um, can you come to the party, what's your best price and all those types of things. But brokers are also doing that as well after the sale. So I think the more opportunity you've got to market your wool uh, in, in a much broader sense than um, what, uh, how, many, how many brokers, how many, how many buyers a broker can ring, is, the, is a better opportunity to sell your wool. So, um, we certainly do that post-sale. Um, we don't work in a vacuum here. We want to engage the buyers and we want to sell wool that's on the system. So, um, so past in wool, they do have that opportunity to, um, to meet that reserve and then we engage them after that sale. Very good. Uh, that's all the questions we've got um, from the audience today, Thank you. Tony. So I'll hand it back over to Nala Dempsey. Okay, Thanks thank well. you very much everyone. There's just a few things before we wrap up. Uh, there will be a recording of the um, webinar on the Leading Sheep 